When is it a good idea to use a D-dimer to help rule out pulmonary embolus? Well, the big takeaway from this video is that you shouldn't be using D-dimer if someone has a high probability of having a PE. Then you should go straight to CT and they should get a CT pulmonary angiogram to diagnose or rule out PE. But in the case that someone has a low or moderate probability of having a PE, then a D-dimer is a good test to help rule out PE because if it comes back negative, then you can avoid the need for invasive or expensive or radiating imaging. But if someone comes back with a positive D-dimer, then they still need to go on to have the CTPA. Now, there's also a set of rules called the PE rule out criteria or PERC for short, which is basically a checklist of features that you can try and use to avoid even having to use a D-dimer. So to do this, you have to have low probability based on the Wells score. And then if someone also is negative on the PERC criteria, then they can be discharged without a D-dimer and without any imaging. But if they come back positive on the PERC criteria, then they get a D-dimer as if they had intermediate risk where you'd give them a D-dimer from the beginning. Then if the D-dimer is negative, you still don't have to image that patient. But if the D-dimer is positive, then you're back in the situation as if they started as high probability and they get a CTPA.